thank you for waiting and welcome to Engadget's live recap of the Apple Peak Performance event. I am Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe. Joining me over there here is <laughs> Senior Writer Sam. Yeah. Hey, hey, Sam. <laughs> you did it. Hey, what's going on? Hey, uh, we see that there's a lot of people here on the live chat already waiting now. To avoid any confusion, I want to be clear, we're not from Apple. This is not Apple's event. This is just a recap of what Apple just announced. There was a ton of stuff. We will go over all of it and answer your questions. Uh, and before we get into it, I want to say hello to everyone that's already here. We have regulars uh, like Mark Dell, Sandeep McCall, Dhruv Karmokar, Daniel Diaz, uh, some new names too, I believe, Clay Man, U-T-H-E-J-K, uh, Aaron Analog from Minnesota. Very nice. Uh, Irreverent Rex, I will try to say hi to as many of you as possible, but that's not going to be uh, feasible given we have to actually talk about Apple. Um, so Sam, today there were a lot of things unveiled. We're mm -hmm. not going to talk about every single one of them. I do find it funny that uh, today Apple might have introduced like one of its like its cheapest iPhone, but also its most expensive Mac. Mm -hmm. I, I got I got some thoughts. So whenever you want to start, let's we'll get, just, right get into, into it. it. Yeah, yeah. Let's get right into it first. The little news out of the way: Apple announced that TV Plus is getting live baseball. We've got Friday night baseball via MLB coming to the TV Plus prep platform platform we've got two new shades of green coming to the iphone 13 series really warming us up slow and easy there yeah, different shades for dove... the pro and the regular for for some unknown reason but okay exactly and then the pro version is called alpine but the non-pro version of green is just green uh, jungle green i don't know you're not fancy enough um we did dive right into the iPhone SE. Um, and as per, you know, Apple's usual style, there's no generation number attached to this model, but technically we're going to think of this as the iPhone SE 3. It's like the third iPhone SE. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the 2022 model. It looks exactly like the iPhone SE 2, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is very strange. It, it, it even has like that the, the rounded sides that the old like right. iPhone eight and stuff has. It, 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 I, I, I saw that right. It's not like it doesn't yeah. have the flat edges that like the new iPhone thirteen has. Yeah, it doesn't have that square look. Uh, mm -hmm. with that that I think it's somewhat similar to the ten R in the sense that like the ten R also had that sort of squarish uh, rounded rounded corners look. Right. But the biggest throwback here is that Touch ID and the home button are. still still there it is the year of our lord 2022 right and this might be the only phone that still has a front home button i don't know is that a controversial decision sam no and, and so he, he here's like my, my kind of first take about this is that um i i don't mind them keeping the the touch the home the front like home touch id button because you know that is something that like especially a lot of older people and a lot of like really old school iphone fans they really like so my issue yeah. is that like, you know, the new thing is like the A A15 Bionic chip, which is nice, you know, add, add the yes. new processor, make it speedier. Fantastic. But like, mm -hmm. to me at this point, the iPhone SE branding is just, just call it the iPhone classic because that's what people want. They want a classic iPhone that's like, okay, I don't want to change. I don't want to use the new like swiping gestures on, on, you know, modern iOS or whatever. I want the front facing touch ID button. I want the home button. Just call it the iPhone Classic because that's what it is. It's the iPhone yeah. that's like the old iPhones that people used to really like. And they just put new guts inside it and they made it faster. Um, I mean, if if they keep doing this for the next few models and keep sticking to a home button, I just, for me, I personally wonder, like, is iOS 15, which this ships with, right? Built mm -hmm. to handle that sort of navigation since, like you pointed out, everything's swipe navigation now. I'm sure it's a simple enough thing to just be like input with like home yeah. button means go back home, you know, whatever else that. I, that I think does. it's close enough that like it's not a huge issue for Apple to continue supporting the home button. The thing yeah. that really like I find interesting is that like, you know, the iPhone 13 mini exists. But mm -hmm. that thing doesn't really sell well, and it's not that much more expensive. But the iPhone SE comes out, and people are like, oh, this is the iPhone that I really care about. And it's like, you're really talking about the difference between a slightly larger screen and a home button, because the overall phones are pretty similar in size. So it's yeah. like, clearly, the thing that people want is the home button. Call it the iPhone Classic. And I think everyone will be like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. We have all yeah. the new iPhones, and they're all super powerful and flashy and have new designs. And then there's the iPhone Classic for everybody else. 
<laughs> let's bring let's let's go over some of the specs too because you sort of touched on them so there's a 4.7 inch screen here um <clears throat> there's a 12 megapixel camera on the back it now supports 5g though you know the press release seems to i mean the screen seems to say uh sub six uh i haven't looked deeply into the the specs list yet although the press release did not mention if it's just sub six but it does appear to be only sub six right here um and then we've got the the single 12 megapixel camera on the back supports things like smart hdr4 deep fusion you got photographic styles those are simple enough to add through the software um like sam also pointed out the a15 bionic chip here that's a quad core um chip and then also ip67 there's increased durability mm -hmm. um covered in glass here with with like the same glass that's on the back of the iphone 13 but to me one big contention here for me is the starting price. It starts at four twenty nine, which last year's or last year's the last model started at three ninety nine. So there's a thirty dollar mm -hmm. difference for the starting price, and like it's just smacks of I don't know the word. It's not irony. It's just it's it's sort of weird that your budget friendly phone is also slowly increasing in price. Yeah, That's just I mean, not really fun. I don't have as much of an issue with it. And in fact, I think like the old iPhone SE when it first came out was probably like a little underpriced, if we're being honest, mm -hmm. maybe. But, you know, yeah, it, it definitely sucks. Uh, I mean, yeah. there's, there's no about it. It sucks that the iPhone SE is getting more expensive. Yeah. Um, we got uh, Forrest Nelson in the chat asking, what about the notch? This is not a full screen display. So there is no need for a notch. They still can hide the front camera. In the top bezel, there yeah, still it's, is. It's the only a iPhone bezel. without a notch. <laughs> it is. It's the only iPhone without a notch, which is a good point. Um, and I, I see a lot of people uh, are are going back and forth about the names that you've suggested. I do think classic maybe keeps it from moving on to other designs in future, but for now it does seem like a more classic design. Um, okay, I, I, fair. And you know what? It's you fair. know this this is just like I'm clearly not a marketing person, so <laughs> you know feel free to dog on me as much as you want. It's just like the, <laughs> yeah. the iPhone SE is the iPhone that doesn't change. Like yeah. and it's like it's the one that's, 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 that's my that's my point of view. Yeah, iPhone, the iPhone Retro. Um, a lot of people are interested in uh, a new in, in the M1 Ultra stuff, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, people are also saying things like, "There's no new iPhone." Slash, they you know they were wondering if this was the next iPhone event. And yes, we saw a new iPhone, but it's certainly not the iPhone 14. Yeah. So I mean, there, there's there's nothing that's going to stop Apple from saving all their big stuff for the fall. You know, that's yes. that's the day. You know, September, early September is you know, the, the week you want to circle in your calendar if you want a new iPhone. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, you know, I see a question in here by UN that's asking about iPad Air. We're going to get to that shortly because Sam wrote all about that for uh, frangadget.com. And mm -hmm. I think we're going to get to you with the questions. Um, for now, if you have any more questions about the SE, throw them in there. Quick shout out to Callum Stocking, James Stanford, Carlos Dilius, and Kari Koo, who all said hi, hello, and good morning. Also, um, someone someone in the chat just code SE equals same edition. Yes, I love that. Yes, exactly. SE supposedly, I'm sure Apple means it to be special edition, but you know, same edition makes a yeah. lot of sense. Makes sure. more sense. Um, so there was like hi from Ecuador and hi from Indonesia, lots of places. Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, I think that was it on the SE questions. Uh, SK is asking, where is the USB-C iPhone? I feel like we have to wait a while. Yeah, the, the, that, that, that one guy made one, and he's like, oh, you can do it, but they do, Apple doesn't want to. It's, it's not going to yeah. happen. It's, it's not for a long time. Um, there, I feel like there's a lot of licensing slash their own proprietary stuff at work here that we're going to talk about. Um, a lot of questions about iPhone... 13 and uh i think Prajwal and said iphone 12 versus iphone se3 i don't feel like that's a fair comparison to make because iphone 12 was always going to be a flagship line i mean the iphone se does have like a new processor newer processor but in every other way it's behind the iphone 12 it's got like only one camera like i've said so many times and it's just a different beast of a phone let's move on to the ipad air and the first thing everyone's talking about seems to be screen refresh rate. But Sam, take us through the high level like highlights of this of this device. Right. So, I mean, if you look at the previous model, that was the first iPad that had like the really straight sides. They got rid of the home button um, mm -hmm. and then moved Touch ID to the power button and then really did that edge to edge 
design. So that's yeah. like the, the, the same design language that Apple has been using for all of its you know more recent iPads. So they didn't really change much design wise. They added an M1 chip, which is actually kind of surprised because um, you know the M1 was they put it in the iPad Pro and it's on the Mac in a lot of bunch of Macs. But it was kind of like you know do they put the A15 Bionic or do they go with the M1? And that's a really yeah. interesting thing because it's like okay now the iPad Air is just as powerful as the iPad Pro and the the smallest iPad Pro is has an 11 inch screen while the um, iPad Air has a 10.9 inch screen which is like okay those are really really close in size and really close in performance and the iPad Air costs no, like 100 150 dollars less at least um, than the smallest iPad Pro so that's like mm -hmm. you know a really important consideration to make yeah, I mean, the, the iPad Air and the Pro series generally like have slight differences. I feel like you're more likely to use the Pro series as a so-called laptop replacement with the like book cover and all of that stuff or type cover. Um, and therefore, like it would need different types of power. But yeah, the M1 chip is very interesting here. What's the screen refresh rate do we know on this thing? I think it's the same. I don't think it has ProMotion. Let me, yeah, let me double have... check on that. I'm not, um, yeah, I feel like if they did, they would have mentioned, you know what I mean? Like, it yeah, would have there's, been something there's, that... I just double checked the press release. There's no mention of ProMotion, so 60 hertz. Yeah. Um, and um, so that, that's going to be like, now that the, the iPad Air has the M1 chip, that's the biggest differentiation between the iPad Air and the base iPad Pro is no ProMotion, 120 hertz, um, because the iPad Air still has uh, Apple Pencil support and all that too. Yeah, and this one gets 5G too, right? Yep, and there's new optional uh, 5G connectivity if that's the kind of thing you want. Of course, it'll still be available in a Wi-Fi uh, only model, uh, which starts at 599. And these are all just a reminder. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong about the iPad Air, but I know the iPhone SE was available starting March 11th. Is that the same for iPad Air? I believe it's March 18th. Yep, uh, March. March 11th pre-order. Pre-order March, March 11th. 18th. Yeah, official sales March 18th. Gotcha. So I feel like for you all watching right now, and if you're really like pumped to pull the trigger and buy one, um, I always advise people to hang out and wait for your <laughs> full review before you actually spend any money. Um, but if you're already a fan of Apple's and have been wanting a new iPad for a while, and you know for sure, for sure, nothing's going to change your mind, then go for it. Um, but do we know anything about the screen technology about the iPad Air? Is it the mini LED that we saw on the iPad Pro or is it just... Uh, it's liquid retina. Um, so same as... So same yeah. 500 nits brightness, which is the exact same as before. Um, true tone, which, you know, once again, same as before. So not much has really changed on the screen um, at all. Uh, Elena Abravanel, I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, says, can you tell me what's the color? And I believe this is about the iPads. Yeah, so there are five colors, space gray, uh, starlight, pink, purple, and a new blue color, um, which they didn't show. They showed the purple one more than the blue one, but yeah, yeah. there you go. Um... Let, let me see what other questions. Looks like, uh, yes, Upanesh Chenny is saying you can get all your information at the Apple website. You can also get it on the Engadget website. Yes, you can get it on the <laughs> Apple website. Sherilyn's a company um, woman. Yes, I am here to push Engadget.com. Um, Louis Catano, Catano, I hope I said that right again, uh, says maybe it doesn't have the 120 hertz screen because of the battery as it is so thin. It is, it is very thin. I've always mm -hmm. been pretty intrigued by um, the, the iPad airs they look really nice but sam you also recently reviewed the galaxy tab s8 plus for us mm -hmm. in terms of specs comparisons um let's say for example the tab s8 plus th that one has like a 120 hertz screen right it, do it does yeah and so it, that's another reason why i mean the the tab s8 is available in three sizes so like for it's not like a true comparison because you no, have yeah. the tab s8 it's like they have like the ultra one is for like, you know, there's no 14 inch Apple tablet. So that mm -hmm. is kind of on its own. Um, the tab S8 plus is, which is the one I reviewed is kind of like, you know, the go-to one for like your, you know, tablet enthusiast. Cause it has a 12.4 inch screen, 100 inch Hertz display. Obviously the performance isn't on the same level because it's using a Qualcomm Snapdragon eight gen one chip. Whereas, you know, Apple has historically been leading the way with a lot of its homegrown Silicon in terms of like, you know, just, overall performance and performance per watt um so i mean like you know apple was is out here saying that like 
hey, you know, and this is kind of like the really like impetus for them putting them one chip in the iPad Air is that, mm -hmm. hey, they're like, oh, the, I, the new iPad Air is twice as powerful as a comparably priced Windows laptop. And you know what? I wouldn't be, you know, there's a little fudging of the numbers maybe, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's generally pretty true. Yeah, totally. The, uh, we've got questions about from, again, Upanesh Chenny says, what products are you guys most excited for this event? I, mm, I wasn't really excited for any of them because it's just work, 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 work. Uh, Sam, were you excited for anything? Um, not so I, I don't, I don't know if you want to spoil it, but we're, we're, we're kind of getting to it because the, the next two products yes, yes. are the, the new studio and the monitor. Yes. Yeah. And the M1 Ultra. Right. Um, so for everyone that was in the chat today asking about M2 and being disappointed that there was no new Apple Silicon, the new Apple Silicon is the M1 Ultra, and it seems like it's just two M1 Maxes fused together, so I guess double the power? I don't know that it works out exactly that way, but we did yeah. get new Silicon, and that Silicon features in two new products, The like Sam said, the Mac Studio. Well, actually, just the Mac Studio because what the Mac the Studio display doesn't use an M1 Ultra, right? Right. It's yeah. It's just it's just a monitor. Like, and it's got an A13 or A15 in it. It's got a chip in it, like an A series chip in it to do camera and audio stuff. Right. But the M1 Ultra is a five nanometer process design uh, uh, ARM based chip. Uh, it's got 114 billion transistors. For those of you who are, who are curious about that, it'll support ProRes. It'll support Thunderbolt 4. It's got up to 128 gigs of unified memory um, and 32-core neural engine, 64-core GPU, 20-core CPU. If those numbers get you going, you're in the right place. Welcome. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> you know, The Mac Studio, is, so, so is the M1 Ultra and the Mac Studio, are these the products you were the most excited for? Yeah, uh, it's just simply because, you know, if you look at Apple's portfolio, sorry, excuse me, I got to cough real quick. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm, while you cough, I'm going to look at, the, Dan R says, it looks like they packed a lot of tech and features into that 27 inch. Um, the, the screen itself, the studio display, I feel like is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Sam, was it the Mac Studio that, that you were about to talk about? Yeah. Uh, and so actually, I like both of those products because they fit a gap in Apple's lineup that they have ignored for so long because for a long time, if you wanted an Apple computer, you either had the Mac mini or you had to get an iMac, which has, you know, the, la the, the computer guts built into the display. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves is that I do not like all in ones because yeah. the monitor will like a good monitor will last you seven, eight, even maybe that's 10 years. Good. And mm -hmm. then meanwhile, it's like after five or six years, you know, you might want to upgrade, you know, the insides of laptops and you just can't do that on an iMac. So to me, like, you know, the new Mac Studio is kind of the the desk, the Apple desktop for most people if you want, you know, something that's a little bit more powerful than the Mac Mini. And I think that's, you know, it's it's small, it's really compact, it's got, mm -hmm. you know, very familiar design, and it's like, you know, it really fills the gap between the Mac Mini and, you know, the Apple, the big Pro, the Mac Pro, which is more mm -hmm. expensive than, you know, most normal people would want to pay for a computer. This thing's also expensive too, right? Can we yes. talk about the price yet? Yes. I mean so it, so it starts at it starts at two thousand for the M one uh, for which which M one chip is it? Either Max or Pro. Oh, yeah, I the, remember the base right, model. For the for the M one Max. And then it jumps up to four thousand dollars if you want the M one Ultra, which okay, that is a little bit too extreme, I think, on the pricing. But you know, without having tested the the, the new M one Ultra, it's hard to say, you know really what kind of value you're getting but you know if you just want a desktop that's more powerful than the mac mini you know th here, here's your answer yeah brandon r gibson in the chat said basically apple made a computer for studio work in quotes but really they feel like they just made a gaming computer the problem is that nothing that gamers want to play will work on it um vaguely related uh someone in the chat with a name that is insanely difficult for me to pronounce but it looks like zofi so Vicky, so Keefley, sorry, is your last name? Asked, can you play Valorant on it? I don't know about Apple side of the gaming stuff. Uh, Valorant is that? yeah, is a is a Riot game, and I don't think that has native Mac support. I could be wrong though. Valorant, I Valorant. guess is the pronunciation. Okay, um, yeah, it looks like also so, so to answer your question there, probably not. 
And then uh, what Brandon R said seemed correct. Now I I'm very intrigued by the way by this studio display, and I'm sorry this is weird for me, but this is what like someone was talking about how it doesn't seem bright enough. Um, just to quickly go over the specs, this is like 600 nits peak brightness if I am not wrong. Um, 5K resolution is a 27 inch screen. It's got also an A13 Bionic chip inside with the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, which is the same as the one on the iPads, and therefore it supports center stage, which is on Mac for the first time. So, I mean, I think center stage on a device like a display is it makes much more sense for keeping you centered because like you're more likely to leave that thing sitting at your desk and then walk around as you talk or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like a display's features go, I'm not sure how important that is to people who are in the market for a display. Is that like a big thing for you? I mean, I think a lot of people have just gotten used to having an external webcam for desktops. But mm -hmm. for me, it's like, once again, like this really fills a gap in the Apple portfolio because if you look at like the Apple display lineup, there's one previously there's one machine. There's the Pro Display XDR, which starts at like, you know, it's just really, really expensive. And, you know, it has incredible specs for the price, you know, 1600 right. uh, nit peak brightness and all that. And so, you know, I, I wrote like a, like a rant, like not too long or like, I think about a year and a half ago, just talking about like, Hey, you know, the Pro, DX, Pro Display XDR is cool, but just, hey, mm -hmm. can you make a, a nice display for more like regular people? And it's just like, this is kind of it. It's still a little bit on the pricey side, um, right. starting at $1,300. Uh, so it's like, you know, but once again, at least like it, it feels like Apple is like, you know, back to making computers for normal people instead of, oh, hey, I am an independent art contractor and I have a company who will buy me lots of fancy gear. So I don't really actually care about how expensive stuff is. It's like, oh, hey, this is moderately affordable. It's still pricey, you know, like a lot of mm -hmm. Apple things are, but at least it's yep. like, hey, you can think about buying one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's within the realms of consideration, especially if you do like monthly payments or something like that. Mari Diaz in the chat has a question. Why would you need to rotate the screen to vertical mode? <laughs> Fair question. Lots of uh, monitors and TVs we've seen in the last two years have had this option of being able to flip vertical. And I think that just speaks of that kind of world we live in now where vertical content, vertical video especially, is becoming more and more of a thing. Imagine, I'm just imagining, let's say, one day, I mean, I don't know if TikTok uploads, allows uploads from desktop or, or if you can just transfer your file to your phone to upload it through TikTok. But I imagine one day that if a TikTok influencer wants to create really high quality videos or say Instagram reels or that sort of thing, I can see why a vertical mode. Yeah. I mean, there, there's also a lot of people like, you know, uh, finance, financial people love vertical monitors because it makes it easier to like look through Excel um, or just spreadsheets right. or, you know, track stock prices. And, you know, you always see those giant things where it's like, you know, you have like a big landscape monitor and then you have two vertical uh, portrait mode like monitors on either side. And that makes sense. Or even for me, yeah. like sometimes it's just like, hey, I have like four different chat apps like running on, you know, my left monitor, Slack, Discord, um, whatever. And it's so, mm -hmm. you know, if you can have sometimes having extra vertical screen real estate is nice. And, yeah. you know, I, it, it's nice to offer it. Uh, I think all all like really nice monitors should have portrait, a swivel because, um, yeah. you know, yeah. it's useful. Um, you might not use it all the time, but it's definitely useful. Having that option is nice. Couple oh, and sorry, I wanted the... to sorry, just go ahead. Uh, double check. Uh, yes. The price of the studio display is 1600 or 1500 mm. for education um, for schools and whatnot. Okay, so not 1300 Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, but there were a couple questions in the chat I wanted to just quickly address, which is, was there a MacBook? And <laughs> what do we think is going to be coming in the next... Mm, I lost the chat because there's a lot of y'all talking. I don't mean to blame anyone, but I'm going up now. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there was no head... Okay, the other question was, was there a VR headset? No VR headset, no new MacBook. Sorry. No, uh, no Apple car. There was no Apple car. I, I guess I'm not sorry. It's Apple's, it's Apple's event. Nothing to do with me, but I'm sorry that you might be disappointed. Um, Suraj Manu asked, did they delete the iMac Pro lineup? When was the last time there was an iMac? I don't even remember. Um, 
But they, when they I discontinued was... the iMac Pro last year, I believe. Um, and yeah. they're still they they updated the standard iMac line not too long ago. Um, okay. So, but you know, it, it's kind of a shift because you know for a long time you know the iMac Pro was the most powerful app, Apple computer, and then they right. introduced the just the Apple the Mac Pro, um, and so that kind of changed things. Um, I wanna I wanna talk about the question or slash comment that windows one plays me but before we get to that i wanted to shout out when we were talking about tiktok just now i should have also said hey if you're on tiktok you should follow the engadget account on tiktok because we just more or less just launched it recently you got fun videos on there i'm very bad at making tiktok videos so i'm probably not going to be there a lot which is great news y'all get to see other engadget people <laughs> on our tiktok um <laughs> And uh, yeah, go go ahead. It's at Engadget on TikTok. Uh, so yeah. one one person in the chat is asking: Is the studio display a replacement for the Pro Display XDR? Uh, no, I don't think that's it at all. This is a more affordable version of the Pro Pro Display XDR. Windows One Place was saying that you're just looking forward to Apple making a TV since the current TVs have terrible operating systems and have terrible CPUs and typically are not very color accurate from the factory. So I believe you're referring to a sort of combination between the Apple TV box and a monitor, like a screen, like a like a proper TV like set. A, like a TV set made by Apple. Of course, the big right. joke is that there's already like three or four project or products Apple makes called Apple TV. Yeah. And so if they were going to come out with an Apple TV that's actually a TV set, they actually kind of got to think of a new name. Um, so, I mean, yeah. I guess the ball's in their core on that one, but... Maybe they'll call it the Apple TV FR. For real. <laughs> okay. I mean, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't be surprised if it's like call it the apple screen but i don't oh. know that that seems like an apple name but once again not a marketing professional so don't you know we're gonna leave it to apple to figure that out i wonder how much of like we don't have a name for it is the reason for them to not make a thing but i doubt it uh it'll be interesting to see how they decide to to, to name that thing if they ever do um, yeah but, but you know, an apple tv set is one of the like the most requested like apple products for you know multiple years running that, yeah, that and the Apple totally. cars, like people, it's like, oh, we just want, uh, just make it, make it Apple. And it's like, number yeah. one, not, not that easy, but number two, you know, it takes a little bit of time. And a foldable iPad and a VR goggles or, I, or, or AR glasses. Those are on the wish list for so long now. Yeah. Um, lots of people in the chat chiming in just now about what else you would use a vertical monitor like that for. So I appreciate it. Very good. Uh, Sandeep McCall, does the monitor run Mac I believe you mean Mac OS, but you said macros. Um, I don't know if it actually runs macros. That I mean, would be that would be a good I, question for Apple. I assume whatever you connect it to can run macros. Um, yeah. Yeah. It feels like just an output anyway. Um, but also, it does not run Mac OS, if that's what you were actually asking. Um, the other question that came up in the chat earlier that I wanted to get around to is why did Apple put an M1 chip in the iPad Air. And I think Sam, you sort of got to this, but I love to speculate about the rise of M1 and what it means for something like iPad OS and the like bridging of the gap between iOS and Mac OS. Mm -hmm. I, I personally feel like putting an M1 in an iPad paves the way for a good sort of two in one experience. Um, but for now, there's no news of any software that like bridges that yet, right? Like, I think Apple is going to make iPadOS become that sort of experience that is great at mobile, really touch friendly, very good to use. And then when you snap on a keyboard and bring on a mouse, you've got something that's good for multitasking that recognizes different input formats very well. I mean, that's me speculating here, but I, I, I feel like having an M1 chip in there is a step in that direction. Is that completely off base, Sam? No, I, I think in this, like, you know, if if you can allow me to put my business hat on for a second, it's like, it. you know, you have the iPad Pro, they have M1s, and now you have the iPad Air that has an M1 chip. And you can kind of see it's like, okay, so here are, you know, Apple's tablets for people who are like, you know, want to use it as more than just a content consumption device. You know, mm -hmm. you want to be able to use it for preferred productivity or, you know, uh, editing art or editing videos, you know, something of that nature. And then you have the, just the standard iPad Air and the iPad mini. And then those are for more like, hey, I want to have something to read comic books on or watch movies on in bed. And so those are the ones that get A15 chips. And it's like, okay, so you have like the kind of the, the the mainstream stuff and you have like the more elevated, you know, pro and like 
the iPad Air is basically an iPad Pro now. So it's like you have those pros. And so I think the one question I have is like, you know, does the iPad Air continue to need to exist because mm-hmm. it's so close to the the cheapest iPad Pro? And it's like the price, you know, if you're if you're going out today and you don't care about like the 120 hertz refresh rate, the mm-hmm. iPad Air is a great device because it's just as powerful and not quite as good of a screen, but can do everything else and still has, you know, pencil support and, you know, you you can attach a keyboard and that's where you go. Yeah. Imagine, I mean, like, I feel like that's kind of what happened to MacBooks, right? Like the MacBook Air, yes, still does exist. But there was a period of time where there was MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, something like mm-hmm. that. Like there was just like all sorts of overlap in its lineup. And Ma- Apple sort of just quietly stopped making new versions of the MacBook. Um, and, you know, what you said is also echoed in the live chat, Upanesh Chenny again saying, what's the point in getting the iPad Pro if the Air is way cheaper and also has M1? It does have some differences. The iPad Pro does have some benefits like the promotion screen and like that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's 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 seeming like the overlap's getting bigger and it's becoming, I don't know, so Apple might eventually just make the Pro be the bigger model and the iPad Air be the same, but the smaller screen yeah. size. And, and like, if, even if you go back a few years, there was like, you know, some talk about Apple trying to phase out the Air name. And it's like, you know, that kind of makes sense because the, you know, the MacBook Air doesn't have the same, you know, cliche that it did, you know, four or five years ago when Apple like, oh, let's bring out the the MacBook and put it inside a manila envelope. And like, that was their big reveal. And it was like, everyone mm-hmm. oohs and ahs. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, it's been some time since then. And you, yeah. if you look at this, just like the standard M1 MacBook, it's like, oh, that thing is just as powerful, super light, super thin. And it's like, you know, do we really need this Air branding still? Speaking of branding and names, there's uh, interesting chatter in the live chat around the next M1 chip's name. I, I think we've peaked. I think that's it. But yeah. <laughs> Ron Barbaza is like, M1 Pro Plus? M1 Mega? We've got MT going, <laughs> would the next M1 be the M1 Ultra Plus? If they don't um, just do M2, I'm going to be annoyed because yeah. we have four different versions of the M1 now. And so it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're set. There's a lot. Yeah, we're, we're good, guys. Uh, Mohammed Isa Ayer says M1 Super maybe <laughs> coming out in the Mac Pro. Uh, yeah. So yeah, y'all, great names. Apple, I hope, does not adopt any of these names because the next one, like we just said, <laughs> should just be the M2. But yeah. imagine next year would be the M2, M2 Pro, M2 Max, and M2 Ultra. Like, does Possibly, Intel yeah. have this many differentiations in the core? I guess there's Core i3, Core i7, and Core i5. In that setting aside, even series, like UH series, right, right. etc., Right, so you have i3, oh, i7, yeah. or i5, i5, i7, i9, and you know, I9. that's it's kind of the same thing. Um, you know, four different tiers of of yeah. processor. Yeah, that is that is fair. I guess we're done though. Like Apple, cool. We're we're good unless they're like, oh my gosh, if they do right. the same, I don't think they'll do the same thing that Intel does with like different branches because they're not a chip maker. So we're good. M M two M two. Yeah, and and if you look well, like yeah. kind of ahead to the rest of the year, it's like the next. You know, the next event is WWDC for Apple, right? And so, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, ta- we'll be talking about all the operating systems and probably like, you know, maybe they might hint at like a new A16. And then after that, it'll be, you know, iPhone launch day. And then then we'll definitely have like a new new pros- iPhone processor. And then yeah. we might also get, a, that's, you know, when we might see the M2 or whatever they're going to call it, um, make an appearance. Yeah, lots of people very excited and also lots of uh, more spitballing in the chat. M1 Pro Max Ultra Plus 2, uh, fantastic. Mark Dell says Championship Edition, very good. Uh, yeah, we're basically doing Street Fighter names at this point. It's like Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD. It's like, all right, you know, we, we, we got it. I love it. Um, Buckley, with two U's, uh, made the most interesting product recommendation or suggestion ever we need an m1 ultra in an ipod huh okay. i mean, I mean oh. a, a stupid fast ipod okay sure why not sure my songs can like i can skip through songs like that you know what i mean um <laughs> but write that in the suggestion box send it to apple.com do it you never know um and then johnny beck says that they can't wait for a redesigned macbook air with m2 again like sam said yeah, this is probably a later in the year sort of reveal this has only been the first of apple's 2022 
And by two, I mean, I mean the year 2022, not 2022 events. This has been the first of Apple's 2022 events. We're expecting WWDC. We're expecting a, like an iPhone event. We're expecting probably another MacBook event, a proper MacBook event. So at least three more to come. And, you know, Apple tends to like surprise us with other things. We still haven't seen, like, what did we not see? We didn't see AirPods. We didn't see Apple Watches. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't see new Apple TV hardware. Um, right. Of course, like we said before, we didn't see a car. So there's there's a lot more to expect this year. Sam, you're an Android user. I know that. Yes. Do you, like, are any of these Apple products intriguing to you at all? Like, do um, you personally want to get one? The, the, the thing for me is that, like, I think the studio display is the most attractive thing for me. Like, I recently had to move around my home office, and I'm, like, kind of casually shopping for a new monitor. Probably not going to buy mm-hmm. one anytime soon. But, you know, $1,600 is kind of outside my price range. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would I, I want like a really nice high quality display that I can use for everything. And I'm kind of been thinking, and it's interesting if you look at the formats, like Apple doesn't do ultra wide monitors. And that's an interesting mm-hmm. choice. Um, yeah. So, you know, you'd have to do like a, if you wanted the two monitor setup, you'd have to get two of those. And then you're looking at like $3,200, which is like, all right, all right. Um, but you know, like, I think, you know, with more people working from home, it's like, I've been really thinking about, it's like, you know, how do I make my, the limited space I have for my home office, you know, feel really like powerful. And it's like, you, you want to have that familiarity, but you also want to have, you know, a good quality display because that's what you're Mm -hmm. looking at everything through. Like, that's what I use to edit photos, but also I look at it all day for writing and everything like that. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, people's like, oh, they tell you, it's like, you should spend a lot of money on your bed because you're in it so much, like, you know, eight hours a day or whatever. And it's like, when you talk about your home setup, you're looking at your monitor. Sure. You have, you might have a huge expensive rig powering everything, Mm -hmm. but if you know, your monitor's crap, then you're not, you're not really going to have a great experience. And so, you know, personally, I think I want to check out the the studio display, see how it is. I'm not sure if it's necessarily for me, but I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I love that there's a, you know, slightly more affordable version of the pro display yeah this is true um i'm not a big display person but i might have to because we're all moving to a hybrid workforce and i'm going to have to build mm-hmm. up a home office very soon so i'm going to be in the market uh soon enough and it's 1600 like you said is a little too much for me i'm also not that hard into the apple ecosystem just yet um, are, are you more yeah. of a single monitor person or are you like dual monitors I like dual monitors when I can have it, like when I have the space Same. for the setup. Right now, my apartment's just not. So I've been a laptop girl for a long time now. Mm-hmm. It's sad. I make things work. But when I accidentally hit start button and arrow, and that, that just screws up my entire situation. Yeah, we, we, need, we need the campaign to get Apple and Microsoft and all the PC people to get on the same page and like, okay, we got to figure it out. Command or control, which one is it going to be? Oh, or... true or windows or commands uh, yeah yeah we, well we, that's also wanna, yeah we gotta we gotta streamline these things yeah we, well yeah there's a lot of fragmentation over there but okay back to the chat for a minute uh one last name i'm going to shout out because y'all have so many great names bryant mitchell with super m1 alpha 2 mega mix yeah it sounds like an ipod device um also if you guys still have names uh that you want to send our way send them to our twitter adding gadget or me on twitter adding at uh, sherlyn though Sam, do you want people to send you things on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, at Sam Rutherford. Send me all you your go. memes and Street Fighter 2 inspired uh, Apple names. <laughs> oh my gosh, amazing. Um, and then Mark Dell uh, says your M1 12 inch and the AR glasses is what you want. Mm. Great. Um, Tom Randall and uh, also said the Huawei Mate View monitor is a great alternative to the Apple Studio display. There's actually a lot of good options over in PC land. Mm-hmm. Um, HP makes some great ones. Lenovo, Think Visions are kind of boring looking, but fine. Dell also makes some great monitors. Um, monitors are not like the meat of what we review here at Engadget because we don't have a dedicated monitor person that's not Devendra, and Devendra has too much to do. But <laughs> we will definitely uh, look into them, and I'm sure we have a guide somewhere about what monitor to buy. If not, yeah, we we may or may not have a new monitor coming in soon for review. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, um, Michael Timpson says that they have five monitors. Who hurt you, Michael Timpson? But, I, no, I, I respect <laughs> it. I, like, if you have the space, and like you know, I, like for me, it's like 
having like a, a really nice home office is just like a dream that I've been like trying to put together and it keeps getting like derailed from, you know, from yeah. life and stuff like that. And it was like, you know, one day I'm going to have a gorgeous home office and I'll be so happy. I know that would be the day, like a, a computer that I can leave there. And it's just like, I don't have to like put it away at the end of every day. Cause that's why I do now. I'm sad, but no, Michael Timson or whoever else has a five monitor, four monitor setup. power to you. I just can deal with that many screens in my face during work. Um, but also shout out to the Engadget account who one upped Michael Timson by saying that they have six mm. monitors. I guess good for you <laughs> too. <laughs> wow, that is a lot. It's it's a war now. You, you just yeah. got to fight for monitor supremacy. Man, like a whole wall of monitors is just like that. We call that a keynote event. Um, I'm going through the rest of these uh, chat questions or comments i believe tim schwartz asked does the new iphone se have ultra wide band for air tag precision so uwb for air tag uh like the feature of like find my iphones where you can get so close so precise to like down to whichever bookshelf it is in your room i am double checking i didn't see mention i didn't it. see it either uh the problem with oh i saw another question too during the early parts of this uh recap someone was asking if, what was the ipad's ram and i was like mm, apple doesn't ever tell you they RAM never tell information. you that's the one thing they never tell you is how much ram is in their th in their devices uh unless yeah. unless it's a desktop or like a desktop laptop like one of those right like the mac or the mac pro where right like, but I I ipads and iphones they never tell you how much exactly so, so far, I haven't seen mention of ultra white band on the iPhone SE, but, uh, and I also wouldn't be surprised if it didn't have that. Uh, like I said, the design doesn't look like it is vastly different. Doesn't look like it's much bigger. Doesn't even right. have to be that There's much no UWB bigger, and there's... there's no wireless charging if that makes yeah. a difference for you. Right. So there doesn't seem to be like space on board. Like they managed to squeeze in 5G like radio, which by the way, only is up six and not millimeter wave. So like the hell is you if they can't even do a millimeter wave. They probably didn't have room to do UWB. So I'm sorry if that was something you were looking for. Um, but by the way, if you guys have more questions, um, Sam and I will be here for a little bit longer, but we're going to have to wrap soon enough. So keep your questions coming. But also, we will be back here on the Engadget YouTube channel. And by we, I mean me and <laughs> podcast co-host Devendra Hardwar. Um, here Thursday morning at about 10 a.m. Eastern for the Engadget podcast. We live stream our recording of the show here, and we will be able to speak to you directly and answer more questions. And also, it'll be Thursday. We will have had two full days to fire Apple PR with all kinds of questions. So we'll have more answers for you. And also, Devendra is like, just such an expert on the M1 uh, Apple Silicon stuff. He'll be able to really answer a lot more questions there on that day. So come join us on Thursday at about 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, but yeah, we're going to be here for a, a little bit longer. Pitesh Mystery said that you just checked the technical specs and it said the iPad Air will have 8 gigs of RAM. Would you be able to drop where you got those specs from? Is it the Apple newsroom? Just well, out of someone also saying the iPad Air is four gigs of RAM. Four so gigs. we're, we're going to have to do some confirmation on that one. Yeah, it's a little. Uh, yeah, I can. We can also ask Apple before that. Um, Gary Rand said, "Hello, chat. Hi, hi to you." Um, it looks like all M1 chips have minimum eight gigs of RAM. Is one of the things that Gary Ram mentioned. Could be. Um, again, let's double check the specs. That might be that might be a M1 chip requirement. I can hear I can hear typing, so I feel like Sam's on it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not seeing anything in the press release, so we're gonna have to yeah. ask them directly for, for yeah. confirmation. Yeah, Apple doesn't make its information on these kinds of details that easy to find, and I don't want to just tell you yes or no. Um, oh, Charles Potts says it's on their site. We will look. Uh, um, Mama Isad Ayer says, you can't wait for the next upscaled episode from Engadget for the M1 Ultra. It is coming! I have good news. We will we will have more upscaled episodes because uh, our host is back. It'll be great. Oh, um, and so uh, for, for all of you who are looking for tech specs, Apple has updated uh, the new products with um, all the tech specs. It's on live on the site now. And the iPad Air does indeed have 8 gigs of RAM. There we go. It's the product pages 
for probably pre-ordering them, right? That yeah. we're looking at. Yeah, yeah. They they have the view pricing button. You can't pre-order let that uh, pre-order just yet. That's go lives. Uh, that goes lives on Friday. Yeah, March eleventh at five a.m. Pacific. I am just double checking this pricing on the iPhone SE as well because I know I see it says it starts at four twenty nine, and the last I looked, it said from from three ninety nine. So there was a little bit of like a jump there. Brent Mitchell says, is the 64 gig iPhone SE big enough for most people? I feel like no. I don't know if I'm most people. That's the thing. Like, no, I, I, don't I kind if... of I kind of agree with you. Um, yeah, it uh, feels there, too little. Yeah, there, there were some rumors talking about how Apple was going to double the base storage up to 128 gigs, and they didn't, and I really wish they had. Yeah, they should. I, again, it's already $30 more expensive. Feels like you're getting 5G for that price like what <laughs> okay new durability so-called better battery life and okay the a15 bionic those are like the main differences between the older iphone se and this one um and the 30 dollars difference does that is that justified i don't know obviously we'll have to get in a unit to test but cool um also, and there's no 128 gig option you either go 64 gigs or 256 so... i feel like that's a decision they definitely made like a while back i, I mm -hmm. remember being like a little miffed at that to like why up like why get rid of the middle option instead of making the base option a higher storage uh model mm. gary ram's question let's root for final cut pro 10 or x on ipad in april yeah why not do you, i i would i would not do <laughs> final cut on an ipad myself but there you go i Went to school and learned Final Cut on Macs, and that's really yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you know, if you don't have a serious. keyboard, like not using without the keyboard shortcuts can be tough. But at pain. the same point, like you know, it's got the same chip as a MacBook, and pretty much the same amount of memory. Don't know about the thermals. Like it's a slab compared to like at least something a little bit bigger with more room for this heat dissipation. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not an engineer. Could could be cool. It'd be, it'd be nice to at least have the option. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're going to, I think, wrap this up in about three minutes. So get in your last few questions. I think Brian Mitchell was trying to just raise an actually good point that like the base storage model of the iPhone SE is just very, very small. 64 gigs. If you take any number of pictures or videos at all, you're going to find yourself running out of that space really quickly. Um, and if you install a lot of apps especially like data intensive or, or storage intensive apps, then yeah, that's not a great idea. Ashish Anand asked, is it worth it to go for the new Air if the price difference between the Air 4 and 5 is $100? If, I would say if you can have an app or you know a productivity situation where you're really going to get a benefit from the extra performance then the $100 is worth it. If you're just going to use it as a movie watching machine and browsing Twitter, Facebook, social media, whatever, you can probably save that $100. Yeah. So it if, really depends on yeah. you know what you plan to use it for, which is, I think, a really important thing that you should consider before buying any device, really. I, uh, I see Johnny Beck has a comment on the green uh iphone 13s and that you wish that there was one for the se because i agree the se's color options are a little limited uh and they yeah they kind of look like army green sort of at least that's what i know them by i actually am a bigger fan of the green on the iphone 12s you like I the mint like green. green oh my gosh this one's so nice it's it's like it's serene it makes me feel calm I don't know, but the other green also makes me feel calm. Let's be honest. I like, <laughs> I like a good green that looks like more of an olive green, but I prefer I prefer the twelve ones. And know, there's also there's also the the Galaxy S twenty two dark green. Ooh. So eh. not not quite not the quite Pixel the same. Five, yeah, the Pixel five. I, I, I actually have that green. too. Yeah, it, it's a sage. Also not it's a more fan. of a sage green. Yeah, I I still prefer the iPhone twelve screen. But we could talk about colors all day. Yes. Um, Gary Ram rightly pointed out that the new iPad has 5G. Well, 5G would probably cost you a bit more than the base price because the base price is probably for the Wi-Fi only model. Right. The, it's it's six hundred or five ninety nine for the base model and seven forty nine if you want the optional 5G. Yeah. 
Uh, and Brian Armstrong asked, what's the refresh rate of the new display? Do you mean the iPad Air? Do you mean the new studio display? Um, no, the iPad Air is probably still at 60 hertz, I think is the thing we said. Mm -hmm. um, studio display, I'm not actually entirely sure what the refresh rate is. That was not in my list of specs that I wrote down uh, before we came online. So we could get back to you on that. Um, Buckley said, thank you for the coverage which I always love it when people say thank you because then I get to say you're welcome. And you're also all welcome for joining us today. We're about to wrap this up. If you have any more questions, you can either come back Thursday morning to the Engadget YouTube channel and we will have the Engadget podcast live stream where we will be able to answer a few more questions. Um, we also are... You can also reach us on Twitter. The Engadget account is at Engadget. I am at Shirley Lowe. Sam is... Uh at Sam Rutherford. Uh, you can also, I guess, send us emails if, if that's your preferred method. Um, there is the podcast at Engadget.com email address, which a lot of us read. Um, so feel free to hit that one up. But for now, that I think that's pretty much it. Just keep your questions coming. We'll try to answer them on Thursday. Um, that'll also inform the way we cover these devices moving forward. But yeah, Sam, did you have any closing notes? Um, no, just, you know, like that Apple is expanding their desktop and monitor lineup with more four options, which I think is great for everyone who's working from home now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I wish I had time to thank every person in this chat. There's been so many of you. I, I'm sorry. I can't, but I would try again on Thursday, but thank you also to our live stream team. Uh, Julio Barrientos leading the charge. We've got our, uh, social media in charge person here as well michael morris we've also got luke brooks who made the graphics that you see for us today of course thanks to sam for joining us and thank you all again for joining us we will see you next time bye bye, -bye.